Audi, whiskey, bring Audi, beer. Good morning and welcome back to Trinidad and Tobago. We touch base with Tobago once again and we will be chatting about World AIDS Day. Uh, in studio we have Dr. Faith Israel, founder, uh, Imani Bet Nasad Foundation and Cindy Andrews, Youth Ambassadors. Good morning, how are you all doing? Good morning, good morning. We're doing very, very fine. All right, so we understand that we have the commemoration of World AIDS Dates today? Yes, yes it is. All right, so tell us, what is, um, what is on for this event? What can we expect? Will there be free testing, etc.? Okay, well, today's event is trying to incorporate the arts so it should be spoken with specifically to kind of bridge the gap in understanding as well as educating the public about HIV and AIDS. Also, oh, it's like a show. It's, it's entertainment as well. Yes, yes. It's a combination. Oh, great. So tell us a little bit about the agenda and, and the breakdown of the entire thing. Okay, so at 4.30 in the afternoon, we will start at the Gulf City Lowlands Mall where we will have a surprise. We are telling people to just come for the surprise. That's at the beginning of the program. And then we are asking the public to join us as we make what is known as a human ribbon outside of the mall. And after we do that, then we'll go and have a typical um, stage, stage production where we talk about HIV, we talk about the risk related to HIV, but we again intertwine it with a theatrical, with a, 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 a kind of, of musical and poetry yeah. and that kind of thing. All right, so Dr. Israel, tell us a little bit about your particular foundation. Okay, so Imani Beth Kinnesis Foundation, it's a group of friends and I. We came together and we decided that we needed to do something for people who had a special needs. We do health education generally. However, in this case, we are focusing specifically on HIV. This organization currently has a support group for people living with HIV, and this is just one of the programs that we do. Okay, and um, how long has this organization been involved, uh, been involved in this kind of work? Well, I have been personally involved with this for a very long time, but the organization was registered in 2015, I think. Okay. All right. So, uh, the stigma issue, I'd like to talk a little bit about stig the stigma issue, and I'm sure that uh, the role that this particular event will play uh, is also geared towards eradicating the, the, this issue that we're having. Could you tell us a little bit about that problem that we're having in society with stigma? Sure. Um, well, you know, when HIV came on the scene many years ago, about 25, 30 years ago, there was a lot of stigma associated with it. In Trinidad and Tobago, still, because it is linked very closely to sex and sexuality, and we are not very comfortable with our sexuality, there is still that link that says that somebody who is HIV positive is probably somebody who is bad, is somebody who is promiscuous, and so forth. And as a result, we've been having that kind of issue. In Trinidad and Tobago, so we have gotten to the point where you can live healthily with HIV. So we have gotten to the point where people are taking their medication and when you take your medication you are able to live a very long life as if it is a chronic disease. So we need people to get to the point where you don't have to worry about somebody who is living with HIV. It's as similar as somebody who is living with diabetes or heart disease or cancer or any of the other chronic diseases that we have. So you're saying it's, it's essentially, it, it's quite easy to become reintegrated into society even after uh, finding out that you have contracted the virus? Yes, it's very easy. I mean, there are people right now who walk up and down, who probably work with you and you don't even know, who've been living with HIV for 20, 25 years. Are people still reluctant to get tested and why? Well, I guess people are still reluctant to get tested and, and possibly because of two things. When they get tested, that identifies them as being HIV positive. And if you have communities where people are still stigmatizing you, where people still shun you, then I will not want to have people know that I am HIV positive. So I would prefer not to get tested so that I do not know. 
So that is one of the biggest barriers to testing. I would like to encourage people though, to dig into Interdigo specifically, where we will have testing, not at, the pro not at our program this afternoon, but we'll have testing throughout Tobago in the health centers, Roxborough Health Center, Scarborough Health Center, Canaan Health Health Center, and at the health promotion clinic. Now, are those treatment sites that you just highlighted, are they also equipped to provide mental support or even make the recommendation? Yes, of course, because whenever we do rapid testing in Tobago, in the health facilities, you must get pre- and post-testing complex. All right, so I'd like to just, I'd, I'd like you to um, just walk us through the steps. So after a person has found out that they've contracted the virus, what is the next step? What do they do next? Okay, so really it depends on the stage where the person contracts the virus, where, where the person identifies that they've contracted their virus. If it is a brand new infection where the viral load, meaning the amount of virus in the body is relatively low and the CD4 count is relatively high, we may hold off a little and not start treatment immediately. However, the national, the international recommendations are that if you, as soon as you find out that you're HIV positive, you start treatment immediately. And in Trinidad and Tobago, we are lucky because we have the medication free of charge within our health facilities. All right. Now, Ms. Andrews, tell us a little bit about the role that um, your, the youth ambassadors are playing in all of this and how critical is it really? Well, I believe each organization collaborating today has a key part. Our organization is focusing on bringing youth to the event. So because we are a youth-based organization, we chose to use the youth through poetry to deliver the message as well as get as many youth as possible to the event. And are the youth, are they responsive? Do they share that vision? Do they see the need to be part of this? Are they really passionate about it? Yes. Well, specifically to the persons that I have interacted with, as well as the feedback we get, a lot of persons that we have reached out to, a lot of the schools and as well as the youth organizations are very interested in the event. So tell, yeah, tell us a little bit about those activities. Uh, you mentioned schools. Is it that you all visit schools to interact with them, to create awareness? What are some of the activities that you all are engaged in right now? Specifically for the HIV project or specifically as a youth ambassador? I'd like to focus a little bit on the, the AIDS project, the HIV project. Okay, well, in schools, there's moral education. education. Yes. So we don't really reach out to schools at that in-depth level. But if we do host a program, we try to incorporate as many students from the various schools to get that external exposure. Okay. Um, Dr. <coughs> Dr. Israel, could you just tell us a little bit about the role that faith-based organizations and others such as those play in terms of offering uh, mental support? Sure. Well, you know, we live in communities. We do not live in silos. We do not live all by ourselves. And these are the organizations <laughs> that make a difference in our lives, our faith communities, our regular sporting communities, our church communities, our um, school education, youth development. Those, the youth development communities, yes. All of those are part of what makes us a human being and helps us to live healthy lives. Therefore, all of those organizations need to be a part of the <coughs> dealing with your HIV status. Whether it is they are welcoming, whether they are the ones who go out and actually say, well, we are welcoming to people living with HIV, we do not discriminate against people with HIV, or they are the ones who help you get treatment and so forth and do that in a way that is welcoming and, and, and encouraging. So all of those organizations have a critical part to play when it comes to dealing with somebody living with. And we want to stress, people are living with HIV. 
we no longer suffer from HIV, we no longer dying from HIV-related causes, or the number of deaths, particularly in Trinidad and Trinidad and Tobago, the number of deaths have been really, really, really low because we have such good a treatment. Dr. Israel, can I ask you to just give us some closing comments and uh, some advice to those looking on and why should they be part of this, even if it's on a voluntary basis and it's year-round, to offer support in any way to form part of these organizations and be part of this initiative? Yes, this is important because you know what? HIV is touching all of us. I'm sure each of you know someone who is either infected or infected with HIV. So you need to be a part of the process. I would like to touch very quickly, though, on the fact that the international standards are saying that we need to get to something that is known as 90-90-90. And the first 90 refers to 90% of the people who are HIV positive need to know their status. So by 2020-20, we hope that 90% of the people who are HIV positive know their status. Of those 90% of those people, we would like to have 90% of those on treatment. And of those on treatment, we want to hope that 90% of them are actually getting viral suppression, which means that the treatment is actually working. And for that to happen by 2020, all of us need to be a part of this. So we are encouraging everyone who is in Tobago to come down to the Gulf City Mall 4.30 this afternoon. We'll be there throughout the mall, be a part of the surprise at 4.30, be a part of the human ribbon right after and then be a part of our stage production. That was Israel, Ms. Andrews. Thank you so much for being part of our show. It was definitely a pleasure chatting with you. Thank, thank you. you. We take a short break and we return with more. Stay tuned.